Hi, everyone. This is Jill. Welcome to the podcast. Do you think if you were more objective about your decisions with an eye towards the future, you'd make better choices? Join me today and find out how. When it comes to the future, there are three kinds of people. Those who let it happen, those who make it happen, and those who wondered what happened. John M. Richardson. So last time we talked about thinking in bets and how it can help us make better decisions. Today, we're going to finish the book, Thinking in Bets, by looking at some other ideas she has for making better decisions. So she talks about this thing that's called kudos, C-U-D-O-S. And it's a scientific standard about how we can have a more objective look at all the things that are going on around us. And so the first part of having better information and better thoughts, the C for kudos stands for communism. And it is not the political communism. It is about a group determined to share ideas with each other. It's when we hide ideas or we don't give the people around us all the full information. That's when bad decisions and bad analysis happens. What we want to do is have good analysis and good thoughts. And that means we're going to share all the information. If you were trying to talk your spouse into going on vacation to a particular place and you know that your husband is afraid of bears, so you keep that information that this place has a lot of bears to yourself, that will keep your husband from making a decision that would allow him to also have a good vacation. Because of our bias, oh, that won't happen. We won't see any bears. We're now making a decision for him instead of making a decision with him. The U stands for universalism. And that just means evaluating all the information, regardless of where it comes from. That's the other side of politics. That's the other side of our local town squabble. That's information about how much your husband hates bears, whatever it is. We should take in information from everywhere so that we can make the best decision possible. If we start carving out information so it only reinforces the things we already believe, we're going to come up with a bad decision. D is for disinterested. We're not really interested in becoming a better decision maker. We're not really interested in learning the most important thing. We just sort of feel like maybe we know everything or we know enough or we don't really need this other information or that other information is no good anyway. And we just become disinterested about other pieces of details that are there. So now we've exposed ourselves to information that's not innately a part of what we would normally look at, but we're just not interested in it anyway. That's also a bias, and that will keep us from carefully analyzing what it is that we should be looking at. OS stands for organized skepticism. That means now that we've taken in the information, we've taken it in from all the different places, we have to really dive into whether that information is any good. She mentions that in the Catholic Church, they have someone on the team looking at canonizing a new saint, and they call this person the devil's advocate. That person is arguing against this person becoming a saint. That person is going around and looking for evidence about why that person shouldn't be a saint. That way, we don't get into this group think. We're looking at all the data. Everyone's going to be sending us all this stuff that this person's great. They would be a wonderful saint. This is what we should do. That one person is looking out to make sure we actually make a wise decision. Think about having a devil's advocate in all your decisions that you're making about life. She said that when people have uncertainty, they're really afraid to sometimes say it to the rest of the team or say it to their spouse or saying it to someone else. You know, they're thinking in their own head, well, I don't know about this. I think that this sounds like a bad idea. And they don't tell anyone. And that is damaging to all the people out there seeking the truth. It's important that everyone has that open mind. Back when I was just starting out in my work career, I worked for an organization and they got offered a grant. And the grant was going to give us money based on how much money we already raised for a specific project. And I said to my boss, you know, this sounds like a scam to me. I don't think we should be doing this. No, no, no. Everyone's really excited about that. It's just a new opportunity. We're going to be able to fund this new endeavor fully based on all this money we're going to get. And sure enough, we raised the money and it was stolen from us because it turned out it was a scam. This scam hit the Boy Scouts, 
the Philadelphia Orchestra, but nobody was interested in hearing the devil's advocate who thought this was maybe a bad idea. There was no open mind there. There was no feedback loop. She talks about when you're trying to talk to other people about these ideas, that we should always lead in assent, which means to use and instead of but. And what she said that this will, first of all, lead with us agreeing with something and then saying the thing that we disagree with. It's rare that anytime anyone talks to you about something that you agree with everything that's going to happen. So instead of me saying, I see that we're going to make a lot of money, but I think this is a scam. That sounds really negative. It doesn't sound like something that the other person really cares to work at. Instead, what you will say is, I agree, we can make a lot of money on this. And it also puts us at risk because this could be something that's not truthful. Anne offers a contribution to the discussion, but is a denial and what she calls a repudiation of what came before. And then she says that the third step you should take is to ask for a temporary agreement. That kind of disables all the emotions that are felt that way. If people are getting riled up, maybe my boss is mad at me because we had this great opportunity and I'm dumping all over it by telling him I think it's a scam. What we could do instead is come to an agreement. Let's keep working on this grant. We have a lot of time that it's going to take to work on the grant. Maybe if we could just put one other person on there who could call around and check to see if anyone's even heard of this company before and what their track record was. But having this temporary agreement in many cases can help us keep working on the thing everyone wants to work on while at the same time taking in more information. And then last step, she said, is that we should always focus on the future. It's really easy for us to make decisions that are only going to affect the rest of the day, maybe the rest of the week. We find it impossible whenever we're trying to make decisions about the future. Not only that, we're biased about today. I want to have this great meal today. I don't care what it's going to do for my diet and my weight tomorrow. We're really good at just trying to please our today selves instead of our future selves. And that's why I think time travel movies are so interesting, right? We get to go forward in the future in these time travel movies and see what choices we made today and how they played out. Back to the future, right? He makes all these choices and then he goes to the future and finds out that his family is entirely messed up because of all the things he decided to do. Instant feedback. That's what's fun about it. We never get that in real life. She mentioned this story from comedian Jerry Seinfeld, and it's one of my favorite comedian skits out there. He talks about night guy and night guy. He doesn't care about not getting enough sleep. He doesn't want to go to bed on time. I have a very strong night guy. I love to stay up. I love to stay up late and do all sorts of things. I feel like it's when I'm at my most creative. But night guy doesn't care that I'm going to be tired tomorrow that I'm probably going to overeat because I'm so tired tomorrow. Night Guy has no ability to see the future and has no compassion to Day Guy because the day person is exhausted and wished we would have gone to bed sooner. I am so bad at that, but I'm getting better. And I started that way by having this saying in my head, a good day tomorrow starts with a good bedtime today. And I keep saying that to myself so that I can encourage myself to go to bed. Good day tomorrow begins with me going to bed early tonight. And if I can keep that in mind, that I don't want to have a bad day tomorrow, I don't want to overeat tomorrow, I don't want to be too tired to exercise tomorrow, and all that will go away if you just go to bed right now. Having that future consideration is really important to whether or not we're going to be successful. And that's just really hard to do. People have done all sorts of interesting things with that, they've done visualizations, you know, try to imagine yourself when you're someday retired and you have all this money because you saved when you were young. You've been saving your whole life for retirement, just $25 a month when you were 20 years old. And now it's enough that not only will you be comfortable when you retire, you'll be able to retire early or you'll be able to take that trip you've always wanted to take because you contributed to your savings, and that helped you go on this trip today. Or what I always try to do 
Think about future Jill can do all these activities and go on all these amazing hikes because previous Jill was thoughtful enough to work out so that I'd be able to do those things. As much as we can put ourselves into the future, the better we'll be. She said that if you can't pre-plan something, for example, if you say, well, at the end of this month, I'm going to put $100 in my savings account and you're just no good at that. Could you instead pre-commit, which means you go into your banking software and you have $100 pull out of your bank account every two weeks? Could you pre-commit to having that happen? Previous podcasts, when I was looking at savings and saving for my retirement, what I did, whenever I was told I was getting a raise, I took that entire raise amount and I automatically put it in my 401k. I never saw the money. And not only that, I didn't leave it up to chance thinking, you'll do it once that raise comes in because you know what will happen? You'll look at your paycheck with that raise in there and go, wow, I could take a really awesome vacation this year. And then the right choice will never happen. So if you can't pre-plan, pre-commit. Is there a way of putting some penalty in for mistakes? You've seen apps out there that talk about bets. You can bet on all sorts of things, comes to weight loss and fitness. There's apps out there that'll say, I have to exercise every day of this month. And if I don't, I bet in this fund, $5, $10. There's all sorts of ways that you can actually build a penalty in for the things you don't do. My trainer, she's fantastic. She told me, you're going to have to do an extra minute of planks for every time you don't do your cardio challenge. Woof. So having these sort of instantaneous feedbacks will help you. Talks about looking at the future when you're successful. Now that you've imagined yourself success, can you work your way backward? Well, I'm 10 years older and now I'm thin and I'm going on all these amazing trips all over the world. What do I do to get there? And you work your way backwards. I saved money for the trip. I lost weight for the trip. I took fitness seriously for this trip and start going back and detailing what it's going to take to have this amazing vision in front of you. And then there's always the pre-mortem, which is when you actually say, wow, this project failed. Why did it fail? You're looking at a future project and you're trying to imagine what killed it off. Now, can you go back and prevent the things that didn't happen or happened, made this project a complete failure? a pre-mortem. So if I'm looking at work and I'll say, why does this program not work? Well, nobody took time to work on the project. We are all too busy. We completely forgot about it until it was almost due. And we didn't do enough research about how this program should work properly to make it a success. Ah, so now we have three really great ideas about how this project is going to go wrong and we can work backwards to make sure those things never happen. She said that we have something that's called a hindsight bias. And a hindsight bias is when we look at something and we say, well, that was just going to happen. You get to when you're 10 years down the road and you're still not in very good shape and you don't have enough money to go on vacation. And you say, well, I kind of knew that was going to happen. We think these things are inevitable, but they're not. So the next part she talks about is called the 10-10-10 decision. And that means when we're going to make a decision about something, We decide, how is this going to affect the next 10 minutes? Okay, I'm going to eat this dessert. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to feel amazing. What's going to happen in 10 months? Well, I probably put on enough weight because I keep eating desserts when I'm trying not to eat these desserts. 10 years. Well, maybe now I'm starting to form diabetes. My knees kind of hurt because I'm not as physically active and I've been eating way too much sugar. Ooh. So now you can see that while... It is fantastic in the next 10 minutes. The 10 month and the 10 year are pretty terrible. And that can help give you perspective about whether you should be doing what you're trying to do. And then she says, you should act now. Test it, try it out, do a proof of concept. And we talked about this in episode seven, where we talked about planning out your possible lives. And so refer to that podcast if you're looking for ways of having experimental life, but just give it a shot. How can we live life using these experiments to try to make us better? Just give it a shot. And if you can build a smaller prototype of what it is you're trying to decide to do, do that and see how it works out. 
keep in mind that these aren't right things. These aren't wrong ideas. This isn't the right decision or the wrong experiment. These are the best bet we can make with the information that we have at a certain time. Summary. Be objective. Use the kudos method in order to determine that the information you have to make decisions is objective and informed. Two, use and, not but. I like what you're doing here, and I'm worried that it's too much work. Three, focus on the future. Think about day guy. Think about 10-year girl. Whatever it is, remember that the future is coming. If you can plan now to give yourself the future you want, you will gain the things that you're looking to do. Four, pre-plan or pre-commit. Either way, it helps you do better for the future. Create a penalty for mistakes. Make it fun, like a bet. Also look at doing a pre-mortem. Decide ahead of time if this project were going to fail and then plan on how you're going to avoid those things. Five, use the 10-10-10 decision-making. Think about what you're doing and how you're going to feel in 10 minutes, 10 months, and 10 years, and then decide if it's the best course to make right now. Six, act now. Keep going. If you don't start, you'll never get there. Challenge. Take the next 10 decisions you have to make and try the 10-10-10 plan. Think about what it will be and write them down. Write down what you'll feel in the next 10 minutes, what it'll do for you in the next 10 months, and the next 10 years. And our entertainment advice of the day comes from The Princess Bride. Where is the poison? The battle of wits has begun. It ends when you decide and we both drink and find out who is right and who is dead. But it's so simple. All I have to do is divine from what I know of you. Are you the sort of man who would put the poison into his own goblet or his enemies? Now, a clever man would put the poison into his own goblet because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. I'm not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you must have known I was not a great fool. You would have counted on it, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You've made your decision then? (laughs) Not remotely, because Iocane comes from Australia, as everyone knows. And Australia is entirely peopled with criminals. And criminals are used to having people not trust them as you are not trusted by me. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going. Sometimes there's no great answer, but you still have to go on to play your next hand. Unless you're Vizzini, and then you don't have a next hand. But Wesley, he learned, prepared, and played his hand well. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Please subscribe, please leave a review, and tell your friends. Have a great week.